good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. I'm back again with another Tower of God video and this time I'm going to be talking about combat in the tower. Now I have tried to make this video <laughs> several times uh, already and it's just a little bit confusing because I need to keep my focus and not focus on the other topics I've researched for today's lore. So here's something to note about the tower. In the tower, combat isn't as straightforward as we'd like to imagine it. Number one, when it comes to combat, um, there are multiple things to think about. Shinsu in itself is one element that can help people. The amount of Shinsu an individual can use can influence how strong they are in battle. Their intelligence influences how effective they are in battle. And strength plus intelligence can make a very dangerous combination. It can make a highly effective, highly dangerous individual. It can also make someone a little bit too cocky. But nonetheless, that's something for you to think about when it comes to the overall uh, perspective of these individuals. The next thing to note about uh, the fighting is the way in which they use Shinsu. Now, each individual is slightly different. You can use Shinsu to physically enhance yourself, to become even stronger than you can be. And you can also use Shinsu to be its own separate power in the form of a lighthouse where you can generate shields using Shinsu flow. You can generate teleportation areas using the Shinsu flow. That is because Shinsu is unique like that. And then you get wave controllers who can just obliterate a field by changing the flow of Shinsu. They can make Shinsu flow way too hard at a person or they can turn it into a weapon and use it against someone. We know somebody who can do that very well. Uh, particularly well. But nonetheless, those are just the basic ways in which you have to put up Shinsu. Then we have the ranking system for rankers. And here's something that I'm going to be very particular on. The only thing which separates rankers is their effective overall positioning. Now, they don't just rank them by strength, right? Because physical strength without Shinsu would be one thing to rank. That would be crazy ridiculous for most of them. Even our main protagonist, Bomb, is crazy, unbelievably ridiculous with just, power, with just his physical power through Shinsu resistance and Shinsu itself. He is off the charts and one of his basic powers because he's an irregular which is another aspect to play into it and a 10 great family member descendant is another one. Irregulars and 10 great family members are slightly different but they have innate abilities towards Shinsu. They don't have to be given it through a contract with the administrator, but they still do sign contracts with the administrator. The descendants aren't irregulars and they don't have the same power. They don't have that full blessing of Shinsu. However, individuals like Balm have the full blessing of Shinsu. To them, there is no limit. They can do whatever they want with the Shinsu that they have within their power. And that is also something else and skills and powers all match and mix in different manners. Example, Balm uses ranker techniques in the form of reverse flow control and the other technique that he uses which is also a ranker technique if I'm correct is blue flurry. They are rankers techniques. They are techniques that use a lot of shinsu and are very hard to control. But because of Balm's particular nature, they're very easy for him to get his hands on. He is physically weaker than most rankers, but there's one thing that we did see about him at the start of season two, his, abil uh, sorry, his ability to instantly mimic. And then later when he got onto the Hal train, we found out what that power is. It's called the power of the emperor. It's the ability to devour anything within your cart so that you may dominate it later. So he has this power and it makes him quite powerful. And similarly, we've got Ra, who has the ability of an ancient within himself, from what we can see, where he can use rocks at work. And then we have Eventhal, um, Calavan. Now, Calavan is a special story as well, because he doesn't make any sense, because he, his powers shouldn't be as effective as they are against one or two particular individuals in the story. When Calavan touched Balm, Balm's power should have done exactly what happened when, um, what was his name? Uh, Mule Love touched Balm earlier. Remember when Mule Love attacked uh, Balm and used, used uh, Blue Flurry? Balm copied it, but he didn't have to touch it. That means, technically speaking, he could use, Balm could use Essence of Bravery 
even though he doesn't have the essence of bravery within him. He could mimic all those powers that Calavan uses and it would make it very difficult for Calavan to fight him. It would be insanely impossible for Calavan to actually fight Bam properly. That also goes for individuals like White and so forth, but things get more crazy. Then beyond all of this, we have the influence of magic within the tower. And that's in the form of spells, and it, it gets even more crazy when you think about it. So overall, when it comes to a combat situation, don't ever add up 1 plus 1 and say that they have a 2 on the power scale and individual B has 0 0.01 power, he can never win. There's a way. There is a chance that he can win with an ability, with a skill, with intelligence mixed with his limited power. He might be able to make himself 100 times more powerful. You get it, it's, it's all of these things that you have to calculate just to see where a fight goes. Example, Bomb vs White. White is a super high ranker. Caliban is a super high ranker. But the reality of the situation is, they shouldn't be able to put up a fight against Bomb. Bomb has so many unique powers that someone like White could never ever handle. And with his unique ability that he recently learned to break spells, it would mean someone like White should never ever get close enough to Balm that he could touch him. And if he touches Balm, there's a strong possibility Balm will break apart his body and release all the souls from within him. There is something that Balm might be able to do because of what he is, but the other problem with that is he's most probably going to pull it all straight into himself. And I don't think Balm wants to do that. That may be one of the reasons why he hasn't fought and broken the spell on white because he doesn't want more souls within him he doesn't want to just absorb powers but nonetheless that is just the basics on this year and i'm digressing quite heavily on balm because balm is my next topic for law i've decided to go with balm and then with whoever else i see in my fancy so we saw the fight with jin sang ha and mashini and we saw that Mashni was absolutely ineffective against Jin Sang Ha. However, Mashni versus someone like Caravan might be a different story altogether. Caravan and Mashni would most probably stand on exact same footing, they'd be the exact same strength. And if those two fought, I think it would be a very equal match. I think Mashni would have the big advantage with the blood of Jahad as a big power boost. And that would be it. I think Calavan would lose if he fought Mashni. But nonetheless, that is the reality behind it. Their powers make a big difference in everything they can do. The 13 months can do what Balm can do in cancelling magic and all of this put together. You know, it makes things crazy. It makes things unbelievable and very hard to figure out. Okay, the next thing to think about when it comes to combat. Beyond everything in the tower, we know that rankers and high rankers can fight with each other. Example is Han Sang Yu. He is an advanced ranker and he can defeat high rankers. He refused the, the rank up to high ranker. Now, there was probably some things that are affecting his influence. Him being a member of FUG and if they find that out, most probably would push him straight into high ranker. But this this is just a small thing. He also has connections with Kenway family members. And that is another thing altogether that makes him more crazy, ridiculous in terms of power. Because of that, he has the influence and the knowledge of things that he shouldn't. He also has the, the aid and assistance of uh, Pug on his side. He is a key member. He is an enema. All of this here makes a difference in his combat. So when he fought the high ranker, high ranker in the cage arc and he actually beat him, that is because he played his skills against the ranker's skills. And that's how he won his fight. And there was Hasracha. Hasracha is a high ranker. His power is crazy next to Han Sang Yu's, but he lost. That's because Han Sang Yu played his advantages. His massive Shinsu power mixed with his extreme intelligence and his foresight in the entire situation allowed him to come up with a victory where there was no chance of victory for him. He used his intelligence to overwhelm someone who was more powerful. Um, that is just as far as I think I can go with all of this, just speaking about it all the way up to the most recent point. But nonetheless, that's the law of the tower. 
that is how fighting works and that's how ranking works um Wola Yuksong, its uh, deputy leader is in the top 20 in the tower. He isn't there purely because he is as powerful as an irregular. Okay, wait, he is as powerful as an irregular in terms of what he's been able to do. He's not as powerful as Yurik. He is, he is most probably powerful than one or two of the 10 great family members. But the thing is, where he sits is because of his influence. He, he has physical powers and he has mental powers and all of these things put together and that's why he's there. I'm, I'm forgetting his name. Bakery Yun, if I'm correct. That's what I heard from Mr. Bonet, one of the law masters who I really, really look up to. But nonetheless, his power is insane. You can't just compare it to anybody. Um, when it comes to all of these things, you, you have to understand that uh, he learns Chen on his own, right? So that is unique, he's similar to a 10 grade family member, he might be a 10 grade family member. He has power that can put him in the top 20, and he has the influence of a group like Wula Song, which could have um, opera users or really powerful lighthouse bearers. And as we know, wave controller plus lighthouse user is a ridiculous combination. That too also plays a part in your influence, who your teammates are, how they can help you, how they can assist you. That's how their rankings play out in the tower. Yuri Jahar, she most probably ranks as high as she does in the, the upper part of the high rankers because of the fact that she is so well supported by Yuran Ha Jahar. Sorry, not Yuran Ha, ja, Yuran Ha. And that is the thing, Yuran Ha most probably supports Yuri and that puts her up in the high ranks and you can't just kill Yuri. It's not possible and she has Evan Edric who is the best guide in the tower which makes it even more difficult to fight her. She has influence with Wula Yuk Song that puts her even higher up and that most probably says that she has strong affiliations within the tower and that's why she's ranked so high. So fighting her isn't as simple as beating her physically. You could be someone like Jun Sang Ha and you could fight um, you could fight Yuri and beat her in a fight in every manner. You could beat her with physical strength, you could beat her with Shinsu. And organization versus organization, she's part of Jahad. So you're gonna fight Jahad to keep, uh, keep her down. And that is a big problem because Jahad is a very strong force. There's several squadrons. And beyond that, you have a Dori who's most probably mad and insane powerful, who you don't want to mess with. You have um, the Ha family, who she belongs to, who's going to be even more crazy to face off with after that. So another problem added to the situation. And add on top of that, the next little layer of icing to the whole situation. You're going to get even more power when it comes to the fact that she has Bula Yuk Song with another very high rank, irregular, and one who is actually active. So you see, that's why she's the rank where she is. Too much of influence pulls her power. And you always have to think about this with every fight. When they say someone is a super high ranker and they don't, don't just instantly obliterate a battlefield, it has influence to do as part of it. Then you have guys like um, Evan Cal. Evan Cal is most probably as low ranked as she is because she doesn't have affiliations. She became a floor ruler, which was probably uh, launched her up all the way to the top 63. Uh, 63rd position but if she was part of Jahad's army for example she must probably be somewhere near 42 or 43 or if she was part of Bula Yuk Song she would be somewhere near 50 or even possibly 30 if she was part of Bula Yuk Song and Fag at the same time she must probably be in the lower 30s that much of influence that much of power almost as much as a 10 grade family member there would be a really big show of what she was and who she is. And when we go to the next part of the tower, we're most probably going to get a ton of lore on how these fights play out because we're going to get to see fights in this current um, nest arc that are going to be ridiculous because we've got Balm. Balm is breaking rules left, right and center. We've got White, we've got Calavan, we've got Evan Kiao. And something tells me that there's a lot of craziness to go. You, you heard my prediction when it came to the end of the clan. I think that we're going to see more craziness with these fights. Now, I hope that you all do enjoy this lore catch-up on how fighting works. 
and catch you all in the next one where I discuss the main character of the story, Bao.